As much as we focus on GLP-1 and its benefits, there are some considerations when we start to try to hijack that pathway by it, with all of these injectables that take our GLP-1 level in a person where it should be normally and takes it on a scale of 1 to 10 up to an 11. There are considerations, and specifically there are two that I worry about as a metabolic scientist. One is the, the so-called control of cravings. People will report with these injectables that they just stop craving indulgences and food in general. This is because the intestines start to slow down to a point of almost being paralyzed where food will start staying to stay in the stomach for hours to even days when it should just be two or three hours. So this paralysis of the intestines can become potentially catastrophic, although it certainly does lead to improved cravings control. However, in people who continue to take the drug, the cravings for sweet things go down until about 24 months. Even when the person continues to take the drug, their sweet cravings have gone right back to normal. And this is a problem because now they've started to out-eat the one of the primary benefits of these injectable GLP-1 drugs, which is to say that they once had a controlled cravings, now it's come back. Second, and potentially, when coupled with this first, potentially problematic, it is that at this very, very high level that the injectables give with GLP-1 agonists, you actually start to have the potential to create more fat cells. Now, I know what you're thinking, how can we be creating more fat cells in a person who's losing weight? Because they're not eating, the fat cells are shrinking. And at the same time, they start producing more fat cells, which helps the fat cells continue to shrink because these other fat cells can start to pick up some of the metabolic burden. So overall, fat mass goes down, but fat cell number starts to go up. Now remember, it's not the number of fat cells that's a problem when it comes to our metabolic health, it's the size of every fat cell. So the fact that the net effect is that the fat cells are smaller even though there are more, there's a metabolic benefit to that. However, remember that first problem, which is that the person can start to out-eat or they overcome the craving control and they start to crave things again. And or they decide they're tired of feeling a little nauseous and, and they get off the drug. So they start to eat the same way they did before now they have more fat cells than they did before, and this could very well explain why people who have been on these injectable GLP-1 agonist drugs or these GLP-1 activators, that when they get off the drug, their weight gain returns very rapidly to where it was and usually goes well beyond. They have more fat cells than they did before, and their potential to store more fat is greater than it was before they were ever on the injectable drug. So my advice then, don't take advantage of the pathway to that degree. Don't hijack it. You want to have a natural activation of GLP-1 based on the food you eat.